1D. Hello again. Listen and look at the picture. There is one example. Is that your new game, Robert? Yes, but it's quite difficult to play. But you're really good at computer games. Not always. Shall I teach you how to play it? OK, yes. What's it called? Silver Moon. Can you see the answer? Now you listen and write. So, it's a new game. When did you get it? It was my birthday last Friday. My grandparents gave it to me when they came to see me that day. I really love it. Let me see. Can you play it with another person? Yes. My brother and I played it a lot yesterday. We had lots of fun with it, but he always wants to win. <laughs> So, who's that alien? The one on the screen? It's called Zappy. You spell that Z A P P Y. There's a website too where you can choose other aliens to add to the game. Wow! Its face is a funny colour green. Is its body green too? Yes. But its feet are orange. Look. OK, so what happens in the game? The alien hops from one place to another and you've got to give it food because it gets tired. It collects socks from different places. What do you mean? It loves socks. It takes them from washing lines in people's gardens and puts them in its backpack. It likes socks that are any colour, but red ones are its favourite. Hmm. I don't think I want to play it, Robert. Skateboarding is much more exciting. Two D, wearing and carrying. Listen and look. There is one example. This is my favorite picture in my storybook about Sky Castle, Uncle Jack. It looks great. Who are all these people? Well, the Queen, the woman in the long silver dress who's sitting in the smaller chair, is called Helen. I see. Can you see the line? This is an example. Now you listen and draw lines. And who's that person? Is he the king? Yes. I love his blue jacket and curly black hair. He looks very important. What's his name? He's called Harry in the story. And there's Michael. He's very clever. The king tells him all his secrets. Which one's he? The man on the path who's playing that instrument. It's not a guitar. Yes, it's not a guitar, but it looks like one, doesn't it? Yes, it does. But it's much older, I think. And there's the Queen's daughter. The girl who's waving on the castle wall? No, not her. I mean the girl with the long blonde hair. Oh, you mean the one who's sitting on the grass? That's right. She's called Mary. And what about the woman who's carrying the fruit? That's Sarah. She's the Queen's best friend, but she works in the castle kitchen. Is she a cook? Yes. I love her green belt. 
I think it's fantastic. The queen gave it to her. Why is that person hurrying? You mean the man with the piece of paper in his hand? Yes. He's got an important letter for the king. His name's Peter. Oh. I'm going to read the next part of this amazing story now. Great. Two D, wearing and carrying. Listen and look. There is one example. This is my favorite picture in my storybook about Sky Castle, Uncle Jack. It looks great. Who are all these people? Well, the Queen, the woman in the long silver dress who's sitting in the smaller chair, is called Helen. I see. Can you see the line? This is an example. Now you listen and draw lines. And who's that person? Is he the king? Yes, I love his blue jacket and curly black hair. He looks very important. What's his name? He's called Harry in the story, and there's Michael. He's very clever. The king tells him all his secrets. Which one's he? The man on the path who's playing that instrument. It's not a guitar. Yes, it's not a guitar, but it looks like one, doesn't it? Yes, it does, but it's much older, I think. And there's the queen's daughter. The girl who's waving on the castle wall. No, not her. I mean the girl with the long blonde hair. Oh, you mean the one who's sitting on the grass? That's right. She's called Mary. And what about the woman who's carrying the fruit? That's Sarah. She's the queen's best friend, but she works in the castle kitchen. Is she a cook? Yes, I love her green belt. I think it's fantastic. The queen gave it to her. Why is that person hurrying? You mean the man with the piece of paper in his hand? Yes. He's got an important letter for the king. His name's Peter. Oh. I'm going to read the next part of this amazing story now. Great. Three E. Spots and stripes. Listen and look at the picture. There is one example. I like this picture. It's great. Can you see the man who's sitting down? Yes, I can. He's reading a newspaper. That's right. Color his beard brown. Okay, I'm doing that now. Can you see the man with the brown beard? Now you listen and color and write. One. Now find the boy who's walking with his mother. I can see him. He's taller than his brother. Yes, he is. Color his trainers purple, please. Okay, I can do that. Two. Would you like to do some writing now? Yes, please. I like writing. Good. Look at the board that's on the wall, the large one. Okay. Write times on the top of that. The people need to know when the planes are arriving and leaving.
Yes, that's really important. Three. Now, can you see the woman who's drinking some hot coffee? The one whose feet you can't see. That's right. Colour her skirt. OK. Can I colour it green? I'd like you to make it blue, actually. Right. I'll do that now. Four. And now write something else in the picture. Fine. What shall I write? Well, can you see the bag? The one that's in front of the girl in shorts? Yes, that one. Can you write sport on it, please? OK, that's easy. Five. And what else can I colour? I know. Can you see the two children who are playing with the model planes? Yes. Shall I colour one of those? No. Colour the flower on the little girl's dress. Make it orange. I love that colour. It's my favourite. There. Brilliant. Thank you. Four B, my friends and my pets. Who came to Holly's birthday party? Listen and write names. My party was excellent. My best friend Jane came, of course, and Daisy too. Daisy and I like the same kind of music. We also love dancing. And I invited the two boys who live in the house that's next to ours. Harry's the older one. He always makes me laugh on the school bus. His younger brother is Pat. I didn't know him, but I do now. He didn't stop singing all afternoon and was very loud. I often go sailing with Nick, so I invited him. We both go to the sailing club on Wednesday evenings. Oh, and Lucy came too. She's in my class. We often do our homework together. Who else? Let me think. Oh, yes. Bill and Helen were there. Helen and I are learning to play the guitar together. She's great. Bill is boring, but I had to invite him because he's my cousin. Four E, my friends and my pets. Listen and write the names. There is one example. How do you spell your name, Sally? It's S A L L Y. Sorry. Yes, of course. Can you see the name Sally? Now you listen. And write the names. And what's your surname, Sally? I can't remember. It's Powis. P O W I S. Oh yes, I saw it on your school book. Would you like to come to my house this afternoon? Yes. Great. You can come by bus. Okay. 
Where must I get off? You should get off the bus in Derby Street. How do you spell that? It's D E R B Y. And is your house in Derby Street? No, but it's very near. We live in Jacinto Road. It's easy to see. OK. Do you spell that J A K I N T O? No. You spell it J A C I N T O. It's a kind of flower. And what number do you live at? My house doesn't have a number. It has a name. Six B. My things. Listen and look. There is one example. Which animal picture is on each thing? I love animals, Uncle Jack. I've got pictures of them everywhere. Look. Do you like my favorite sweater? Yes, it's great, Betty. Mom bought it for me. She got it last year when we visited the zoo. It's got a bat on it. Look. I'd like one like that. This is my favorite animal of all. The one on your snowboard. Yes, Dad bought it for me last January when we were on holiday in the mountains. I love swans. Don't you? Yes, I think they're amazing. Here's my brush too. My friend Mary gave it to me. Wow! What a lovely butterfly. Yeah, it's so pretty, isn't it? I keep it up there on my shelf next to that plastic eagle. I use it every day. Oh, do you have any other animal pictures on your things? Yes, Uncle Jack. I've got some on the backpack that I took on holiday with me when we went camping last summer. The sharks on the pockets look really dangerous. They don't, Uncle Jack. I love them, but I hated the flies that came in our tent. Do you like my umbrella? This has got animals on it too. Let me see. Oh, that's my favorite kind of animal. Dolphins? I thought you liked octopuses best. No. Well, a friend of mine at school called Claire gave it to me. She went swimming with them once. That was very brave of her.、Mm, perhaps. And these are my new gloves. Grandma made those for you, didn't she? Yes, she wanted. Six B. My things. Listen and look. There is one example. Which animal picture is on each thing? I love animals, Uncle Jack. I've got pictures of them everywhere. Look. Do you like my favorite sweater? Yes, it's great, Betty. Mom bought it for me. She got it last year when we visited the zoo. It's got a bat on it. Look. I'd like one like that. This is my favorite animal of all. The one on your snowboard. Yes, Dad bought it for me last January when we were on holiday in the mountains. I love swans. Don't you? Yes, I think they're amazing. Here's my brush too. My friend Mary gave it to me. Wow! What a lovely butterfly. Yeah, it's so pretty, isn't it? I keep it up there on my shelf next to that plastic eagle. I use it every day. Oh, do you have any other animal pictures on your things? Yes, Uncle Jack. 
I've got some on the backpack that I took on holiday with me when we went camping last summer. The sharks on the pockets look really dangerous. They don't, Uncle Jack. I love them, but I hated the flies that came in our tent. Do you like my umbrella? This has got animals on it, too. Let me see. Oh, that's my favorite kind of animal. Dolphins? I thought you liked octopuses best. No. Well, a friend of mine at school called Claire gave it to me. She went swimming with them once. That was very brave of her. Mm, perhaps. And these are my new gloves. Grandma made those for you, didn't she? Yes. She wanted... Eight E. School subjects. Listen and look. There is one example. Now, on Monday, remember, we don't have any classes because we're going on a study trip that day. Have you got a piece of paper? I want you to write some things. OK. We can meet at the town square. Right. right. Can you see the answer? Now you listen and write. We can see some art by Alex Magus at the museum. Can you spell that name for us? Yes, it's M-A-G-U-S. Thank you. Cool name. Mmm. After that, we get on the bus and go to the library. Which bus, Miss Bridge? The number 57? No, that bus doesn't go to the library. But the number 28 does. Should we catch that one? Yes, we should. And when we get there, you can find out about the history of the sport that we're playing this month. You mean tennis? That's right, Charlie. Yes, and I'm good at it. I've got a really great tennis racket. OK. And at three o'clock, we can go to the park. Great! And then please tell your parents to collect you back here at half past four, under the big tree outside the school. Right. Now, one last thing. We can't have lunch at school that day, so... Can we buy some pancakes? There's a fantastic place where you go... No. Bring some sandwiches, Paul. OK. Nine B. In my classroom. Listen and look. There is one example. Where can William sit now? Can I sit on one of the new dark blue chairs today, Mrs White? Not today, William. Sit at your normal desk by the door, please. Can't I sit at the back of the classroom with my friend Charlie? Sorry, not this morning. Can you see the tick? Now you listen and tick the box. 1. What is the first lesson today? Are we going to have a sports lesson today, Mrs White? Not today, William. Your sports teacher is ill. Oh, no. Will we have maths again, then? No. You'll have a geography lesson first this morning. Mr Jones will come and teach you in that class. 2. What should the students take to their art class? What must we bring for our art class tomorrow? 
You'll need to bring some glue. That's all. But what about scissors? We're going to cut out some pictures from magazines again, aren't we? Yes, but I'll give you those. I'll give you pencils and rubbers too. Three. What did William forget to bring to school? Now, have you got all the things that you need at school today? I've got all my books. Well done, William. But you'll need other things too. Well, I've got my new plastic ruler, but oh no, my glasses aren't here. Oh dear. Well, perhaps your mum can bring them for you. Four. Where should the students put their dictionaries? Now, take out your new blue dictionaries. The ones in our desks. Yes, William, and put them on that empty shelf. The shelf that's next to the cupboard. I mean the one above the bookcase. Oh, okay. Five. What kind of competition is it? Right. One more thing. There's a competition here in school next Tuesday. Yes, there's a circle round that date on the classroom calendar. What kind of competition is it? Is it a music competition? That's a good idea, but no, it's a spelling competition, William. Does the winner get a nice prize? Yes, a poster with all the planets on it. Great. Ten A. Clothes, animals, and school. Listen and look. There is one example. Grandpa, look at this picture on my phone. I took it on our school trip. Wow, it's lovely. Where did you go? To a butterfly farm. It was brilliant there. Everything was so interesting. Good. Can you see the answer? Now you listen and write. Which day did you go to the butterfly farm? On Monday, we took some pictures while we were there and had to make a poster about it later in the week. I see. Was the butterfly farm far away? Did you have to go by train? Not this time. The driver took us there in the school bus. It didn't take very long to get there. And were you there all day? No, we left school at nine o'clock. Sorry, it was half past nine. Quite early then. Tell me more. What did you see there? Hundreds of really beautiful insects. I loved visiting the part where they had all the butterflies, but they had a few unusual birds and other animals there too. There was a black swan. That was the most unusual thing I saw there, I think. And did you give it something to eat? No, they have to eat special food, Grandpa. But there was a surprise for us when my friends and I got hungry. What do you mean? Our teachers gave us a picnic. Great! Did you eat your picnic outside? Yes, next to a waterfall. It was really pretty, but you can't swim there. Oh! Come and look at my homework. I described everything I saw. My teacher said it was very good. In a minute, okay? I want to make a cup of tea first. <laughs> All right. Ten 
11b. Visiting different places. Listen and look at the picture. There is one example. Hi, Charlie. Do you like this picture? <laughs> It's quite funny. Can I color it? Of course. What would you like to color first? Well, can you see the boy with the parrot on his shoulder? Yes. I'd like to color his backpack. There. It's green now. Can you see the green backpack? This is an example. Now you listen and color and write. One. What else can I color? What about one of the animals? Which one? The goat at the bottom of the waterfall. Okay. Is the water in that stream deep? I don't know. Use the color brown for that one, please. Sure. Two. What can I do next? Can you see the boys' baseball caps? Yes. Can I color the one that the boy on the right is wearing? Good idea. How about blue? Is that all right? Yes, that's fine. Thank you. Three. Now I'd like you to write something. Okay. On the board? Under the cloud? Yes. Can I call that place Sky Hill? Mm, we need a longer word than that. I'd like to choose the name White Hill instead. It isn't its color, but okay. Four. What would you prefer to color next? The empty plate, I think. Okay. Use purple, please. No, actually, orange is a better color for that. All right. No problem. Great. Five. And let's write another word now. Where? On the flat box by the sandwiches. Okay. Is it something you can eat? I can see the word pie on it. Good guessing. Put the word kiwi above that. Right. Does that taste good? It's delicious. And this picture looks great now. Well done. Thanks. Twelve B, a journey into space. Can you see the robot in this picture? You can. Good. The robot's name is Zenith. You spell that Z E N I F. Now look at the three astronauts. The one in the middle is behind the net. His name's Yabachi. I'll spell that for you. It's Y E B A R C H I. The astronaut that's jumping out of the rocket has a really unusual name too. He's called Paviol. That's P A V I O L. Can you see the third astronaut? She's at the front of the picture. Look, she's playing badminton too. Her name's Glustida. Write her name now. You spell it G L U S T I D A.
12e. A journey into space. Listen and write the names of the planets, and then colour the planets. One. Dad, I have to write the names of the planets and colour this picture. Can you help me? All right. Find the planet that's nearest the sun. Do you mean the smallest planet? Yes. Color it brown. That's the color of Mercury in space. Mercury? Okay. Two. Now, look for the biggest planet. Its name is Jupiter. And what color is Jupiter? Well, first, draw a red spot on that planet. And then what must I do? Put some orange and yellow stripes on that planet. All right. Three. Four of the planets have rings round them. Can you see? Oh yes. What's the name of this planet, the one with the most rings? That's Saturn. And I know what color Saturn is. It's yellow. That's right. Thirteen B. What horrible weather! Listen. Use words from A to complete the sentences. One. Oh no! Look at those big black clouds in the sky, Ben. If it's raining at the sports centre, we can't play volleyball outside. Two. Did you hear that storm last night, Dad? Yes, Lily. I couldn't sleep because it was so noisy. Three. Look over there, Mum. Oh yes, what a lovely rainbow! It's beautiful. Four. The temperature is still below zero, so be careful when you ride your bike to school today, Helen. Don't worry, Dad. I know there might be ice on the roads. Five. It's really late, Mom. Can't you drive any faster? Not in this fog, Fred. It's too dangerous. Six. Look at all the snow, John. It's falling really quickly now. Well, let's go outside and make snowballs. Thirteen C. What horrible weather! Listen and look. There is one example. Do you like this picture, Grandpa? My friends and I often go to this playground. It looks great there. Can you see the kid on the swing, the one with blonde hair? Yes. Why isn't he wearing any shoes? I don't know. His name's Harry. He's one of my classmates. Can you see the line? This is an example. Now you listen and draw lines. There's Zoe. Where is she? On the seat. She brought her puppy with her. It's so sweet. Huh? Has she got any other pets? I'm not sure. She likes all kinds. And who's that? That's George. He carries lots of things in all those pockets. He's got very curly hair. Yes, 
He doesn't like it very much, but I think his hair looks amazing, Grandpa. There's Emma. Look, she's pulling her sledge. Why? There's no snow on the ground. I know, but she likes sitting on it sometimes. And she's carrying a kite. Yes. She loves playing with it on windier days. I think I know that person, the one with sunglasses on. The woman who's reading the magazine. Yes, is her name Sarah? Sorry, no. She's called Holly. That's a surprise. She looks like one of Grandma's friends. And can you see the kid in the black T-shirt? I'm not sure. Do you mean the girl in the pink trainers? Not her. The boy with the red jacket. He's next to her. Oh yes. What's his name? He's called Mark. He's really cool. Thirteen E. What horrible weather! Listen to the first half of the story. What did you hear? Four friends are in the playground. Their names are Sue, Michael, Vicky, and Robert. Some other people are there too. It's a sunny day, and everyone's happy. The weather suddenly changes. It gets cloudier and then starts to rain. Brr! My hair's getting really wet," says Sue to Robert. "And I'm frightened of storms," Vicky says to Sue. "Well, I'm getting really cold. I haven't got a jacket," says Robert to Michael. "Come on." Michael says to Vicky and the other two children, "Let's run to my house." Thirteen F. What horrible weather! Listen, which picture comes next? The children are watching TV in Michael's living room, but they aren't enjoying themselves. What can we do? The weather's worse now. Look, it's horrible out there. How about watching some cartoons on the internet? We can't do that. Dad turns the computer off when there is a storm. We could play chess, or what about doing some drawing? No, that's boring, Michael. Shall we just watch some more TV then? Yes. Fourteen C. Are you hungry? Thirsty? Listen and look. One. What can Julia have for dinner? What can I have for dinner, Dad? Would you like a bowl of soup and some cheese, Julia? Not really. I had that for lunch at Claire's house. Did you? Well. What about some meatballs with tomato sauce and rice? Can I have beans with some sausages? I like those much more. All right. Two. What did David have for lunch? 
What did you have for lunch at school today, David? A burger. What did you have with it? Fries? No, I was very good. I had a salad. Did you have a banana milkshake too? No, just a glass of water today. Three. What does Katie want for breakfast? Good morning, Katie. Are you hungry? Not very. What's for breakfast? I'm having eggs and tomatoes. Would you like some too? No, just bread with jam, please. Okay. What about some orange juice or strawberry yogurt too? No thanks. Four. What did Frank eat at the party? Did you enjoy the party yesterday, Frank? Yes, it was fantastic. We did puzzles and had a dance competition, but there wasn't any birthday cake. Oh, were there lots of different sandwiches to eat instead? No, only pizza, but it was delicious. It was as good as yours, Mum. Fifteen A. What's for dinner? Listen and look. There is one example. I'm reading a funny book, Dad. It's for younger children, really, but I don't mind that. The story's about the animals in this picture. Oh, they're having a picnic. They look very strange. Some look quite scary too. Ha! Yes, they do. And all these animals have names. Can you see Paul? He's already sitting on one of the seats. Do you mean the panda with the chopsticks? That's right. He borrowed those from one of the others. Can you see the line? This is an example. Now you listen and draw lines. What are they eating? It's difficult to see. Sausages, burgers, and meatballs, I think. But the cook burned some of them. Oh dear. What's the cook's name? Harry. He likes wearing that red baseball cap in sunny weather. He sometimes wears sunglasses too. Really? The two giraffes are having fun. Look. Yes. The shorter one's called Eva. What's the other one's name? I can't remember. Sorry. It's okay. I didn't know that parrots could skip. Well, this one can. What kind of juice is that insect drinking? It's mango juice, I think. Well, it's enjoying it. What's its name? Jill. It's a really strange insect. If it wants to, it can change the colour of its body and legs. What a brilliant idea! I'd like to do that, Dad. And look, there's Richard. Which creature is that? The one with the camera in its arms. Does it like taking photos? Yes, videos too. It's looking at some on the little screen. And here's Anna. She listens to rock music all day long. Is that why she's moving her wings up and down? Is it some kind of dance? No, she's getting ready to fly off to fetch some more food. I think. I can't remember. I see. So, what will all these animals do after their picnic? Oh, I don't know yet. I have to read more of the story to find out.
15D. What's for dinner? Listen and order the pictures 1 to 6. William's wonderful honey cake. Hi. You might need some help, but you could make this delicious cake by yourself. Right. You need a cupful of flour, some butter, two eggs, a large spoonful of honey, and something else. Oh, a cupful of sugar, of course. To prepare, you should turn on the oven before you start and wash your hands. First, put some sugar into a big bowl. You don't need very much because there's honey in this cake, too. When the sugar is in the bowl, cut the butter into small pieces. Use a knife to do that. Then you can add the butter to the sugar. Mix these two things together with a big spoon. Find some flour and put that in next. Then break the eggs and put those carefully into the same big bowl. Last, you put the honey in. You don't need a lot. Then you mix everything together again with your big spoon. Some people add carrots before they put the cake into the oven. That might sound really strange, but carrots taste great in cakes. You cook the cake for half an hour. Enjoy! Seventeen C. A day's work. Listen and write the numbers of the pictures in A. A. I love my job. I love making different meals for people to eat. Our restaurant is very famous for its food. B. We have to work in theatres in lots of different places. But it's great because people like coming to see us. C. It's great when someone brings you a very old car. I have lots of fun with those. But most of our work is with newer cars. I like finding the problems and making everything right again. D. When something happens, we have to go and find out all the important things. Then we quickly send the news story to the newspaper office. Seventeen E. A day's work. Listen and look. There is one example. Where did Sarah take each thing? What's the matter, Aunt Sarah? I'm a bit tired, that's all. There was something wrong with one of my computer programs this morning, and I couldn't send any emails. I had to take a letter to an office instead because it was important. It was on the top floor of a skyscraper. The view was amazing. Well, the view sounds good. Can you see the letter B? Now you listen and write a letter in each box. You know the prize I won on Saturday? You mean that silly teddy bear? <laughs> it's huge. I know. I took it back to the fun fair after my busy day at work. Why? Its fur wasn't very clean. They gave me another one. I'll give it to your cousin, I think. Oh, I saw Helen at lunchtime as well. I like her. She's really cool. She is, isn't she? I needed to give her back her scarf. The one she left in the car park last Sunday. That's right. I took it to the new cafe in High Street. 
we had some delicious apple pie and ice cream there. Wow! And I gave someone my umbrella today. Why? Well, I saw lots of people at the bookshop, the one next to the castle, because Matt Eagle was there. <gasps> the pop star? Amazing! Why was he there? He was just doing some shopping. I wanted to ask him some questions, but he was too busy to talk to me. Then it started to rain, so I gave it to him. I wanted to come home after that, but I couldn't. Why not, Aunt Sarah? Because I had to take a map to a hotel first. I met an inventor there yesterday. He was really nice, and he needed one. He doesn't like using his phone for that. Oh! I found one in the supermarket on the corner. He was really pleased when I gave it to him. So, did you do any writing for the newspaper today? Yes, and I took some good photos earlier in the day. I used a new tablet to take those. I borrowed it from someone at work. Great! Where did you go to take the pictures? To the castle. A group of actors are making a film there. I asked them lots of questions because so many people are interested in the story. Yes, it was a busy day. Eighteen B. Time and work. Listen and look. There is one example. One. What time is lunch today? Bye, Mom. See you at half past three. Wait, Sally. You have to be back before that. Lunch is at three o'clock today. That's late for lunch. We usually have it at two. I know, but not today. Can you see the number one? Now you listen and write two, three, and four. Two. What time does the boys' television program begin? There's a great program on TV tonight. What time is it on? I want to watch the news at nine p.m. No problem. Mine starts at quarter past seven, and finishes at half past eight. Three. What time does Zoe have to get up for school? Do you have to get up early, Zoe? Not this week, because I'm on holiday. I get up at ten. But when it's school time, I have to get up at half past eight. Do you? I get up at about seven o'clock every day. Four. What time is it now? Quick, May. It's late. No, it isn't. It's only four o'clock. The film doesn't start until four thirty. Oh, sorry, my watch is wrong. It says twenty-five minutes past. That's okay. Eighteen D. Time and work. Listen and look. There is one example. What's Kim's job? Hello. Is your sister working in an office now? You mean Kim? Yes, but only for about an hour each day. She isn't a secretary. Is she an artist then? She's an engineer. She designs skyscrapers most of the time, but bridges as well. Can you see the tick? 
Now you listen and tick the box. 1. How does Kim go to work? Does Kim take the bus to work? She could do that, but she needs to drive there and to travel to different parts of the city each day. Can't she cycle? There's so much traffic. I think she'd like to, but she needs to carry too much. 2. What time does Kim start work? What time does Kim have to be at work? Well, she has to get up at a quarter past six. Then she has breakfast and leaves home at a quarter to seven. So when does she arrive in her office? At half past seven. It's really early, but she doesn't mind. 3. Where does Kim have lunch? Where does Kim take her lunch break? Does she go home? She doesn't have enough time to do that, Mr Lowe. Is there a cafe in the building where she works then? Yes, but she usually takes sandwiches and eats them in the park. She likes doing that best. 4. What was Kim's first job? Is this Kim's first job? She told me she wanted to be the manager of a clothes shop. Well, she didn't do that, but she worked at a police station once. Really? Yes, but she didn't have to wear a uniform. She worked in the kitchen there. 5. What does Kim like most about her job? Is your sister pleased with her new job? She had to study for a long time, but she loves it. She really enjoys being outside too. Does she have to go to lots of meetings too? Yes, but she doesn't enjoy those very much and she hates talking on the telephone. Nineteen B. Answer my questions. Listen and colour the museum picture in A. This is part of a museum and the boy's name is Hugo. Can you see the strange drums? Colour the smaller one. Colour it red, please. Now, can you see the dinosaur? It's behind Hugo in this picture. Use your green pencil to colour that, but only colour its head. OK. Hugo is looking at the big pyramid, isn't he? The one on the floor. It's made of glass, I think. Colour that now, please. Find your yellow pencil and colour it with that. And find the flag. It's in the corner. It's big, isn't it? Colour it purple. Do that now, please. Thank you. 22D. Important numbers. Listen and write. Dad, I found a great website with all the information I need to write about a special person. So, who are you going to write about? Someone I'm really interested in. Her name's Tame Watanabe, the Japanese woman who climbed to the top of Everest. You mean the mountain? Yes, Dad. E-V-E-R-E-S-T. The highest mountain in the world. Wow. That's a brave, dangerous and difficult thing to do. That's right. She's amazing. 
And you know, she didn't only do that once, she climbed it twice. Really? Yes. She was 63 years old the first time. How wonderful. Then she climbed it again on May the 19th, 2012. And how old was she the second time? She was 73. She's the oldest woman to ever climb that mountain. How did she feel when she arrived at the top? I don't know. Very pleased, perhaps. Do you think her back, arms and legs were sore? Of course. For the last part of the trip, she and the other people in the group were climbing all night. So what time did they arrive at the top? At seven o'clock in the morning. And how high is the mountain? It's 8,850 metres high. That's a long way to climb and carry all the things they needed to get to the top. I know. Twenty four B Leaving and Arriving. Listen to the sentences about picture one. In my picture, the man on the motorbike has got a blue bag. In my picture, there are four taxis outside the airport. In my picture, the plane's on the ground. In my picture, the bus doors are open. In my picture, there's a helicopter in the air. Now listen and check your answers. In my picture, the man on the motorbike has got a blue bag. In my picture, the man on the motorbike has got a red bag. In my picture, there are four taxis outside the airport. In my picture, there are two taxis outside the airport. In my picture, the plane's on the ground. In my picture, the plane's in the air. In my picture, the bus doors are open. In my picture, the bus doors are closed. In my picture, there's a helicopter in the air. In my picture, there isn't a helicopter in the air. Twenty four D Leaving and Arriving. How did Uncle Oliver get to each place? Hi, Uncle Oliver. You have to do lots of travelling in your job, don't you? Yes, Sophia. I went to the airport yesterday. An important person was coming to see me. Did you give him a lift back into town? That's right. In my new racing car. But there was lots of traffic on the motorway. So, were you late? Yes, by ten minutes. He was quite angry. Can you see the letter G? Now you listen and write a letter in each box. I wanted to find out some information at the museum in the city centre on Thursday. Did you go by train? Yes, it's quick and easy. You buy a ticket from the machine, and there are computer screens everywhere with all the information you need about times and platforms. You go to such interesting places. You're so lucky. I know. I had to go and look at a castle last week. I'm writing about it for a newspaper. How did you get there? By taxi? Not this time. I caught a bus, but that was a bad idea. It took such a long time to get there as well. Oh, dear. And I had to go to the police station one day. Why? 
because I lost my money when I cycled to the shopping center last weekend. It was too far to walk, so I went by taxi. Could the police officer there help you? Not really. He asked me several questions. Perhaps they'll find my money. I don't know. Where did you go on Tuesday? Into the forest. Someone saw a bear there, so I wanted to write about that for the newspaper, too. It was a fantastic day. Why? Because I flew there in a helicopter. I was very high in the air. I could see all the lorries on the road below me. Did you stay there all day? No, I came home and then went out to dinner. Where? To your favorite restaurant in Bridge Street? That's right. I went there by boat this time. It was lots of fun. Wow. Twenty five C. What shall we do next? Listen and write the things the students need. There is one example. Our class is going to go to the mountains next month. We'll be there for three days. I'm going to tell you ten things you need to bring with you. Write them in your books. Okay. What's the first thing, Mr. Green? You need to bring a pen. You're going to do lots of writing. Now you listen and write. Please bring some soap too. What? We have to take soap with us. Yes. You need to wash your hands before you eat. And I want you to clean your teeth twice a day, morning and night. So don't forget your toothbrush. And on our last trip, some of you forgot to bring a comb. Please remember to bring one this time. All right. And don't forget to bring a torch so you can see at night. A big torch or a small one. It doesn't matter. You must bring a towel to dry yourselves with too. Just one towel. Yes. Now for the things you need to eat with. Bring a knife and fork. Bring a spoon too. A knife, fork, and spoon. Yes, that's right.、Uh, what else? Oh yes, a plate. Should we bring a bowl too? No, just a plate, please. Okay. What about my phone? Can I bring that? Yes. But you should only use it if you need to send a message or speak to your parents. Okay. Twenty five C. What shall we do next? Listen and write the things the students need. There is one example. Our class is going to go to the mountains next month. We'll be there for three days. I'm going to tell you ten things you need to bring with you. Write them in your books. Okay. What's the first thing, Mr. Green? You need to bring a pen. You're going to do lots of writing. Now you listen and write. Please bring some soap too. What? We have to take soap with us. Yes. You need to wash your hands before you eat. And I want you to clean your teeth twice a day, morning and night. So don't forget your toothbrush. And on our last trip, some of you forgot to bring a comb. Please remember to bring one this time. All right. 
And don't forget to bring a torch so you can see at night. A big torch or a small one? It doesn't matter. You must bring a towel to dry yourselves with, too. Just one towel? Yes. Now for the things you need to eat with. Bring a knife and fork. Bring a spoon, too. A knife, fork and spoon? Yes, that's right. Uh, what else? Oh, yes, a plate. Should we bring a bowl, too? No, just a plate, please. OK. What about my phone? Can I bring that? Yes, but you should only use it if you need to send a message or speak to your parents. OK? Twenty six E. Where can we go on holiday? Listen and colour and write. Hello. Would you like to colour some of this picture? Yes. Is this family ready to go on holiday? I think so. The father is thinking about sitting in the sun, isn't he? Yes, he is. And I can see the tent. Good. Color it orange. Can you see the orange tent? This is an example. Now you color and write. One. Can you see the backpacks? Yes, there are two. They look very full. Color the one with the two pockets. Right. I'll make that one green. Is that OK? Yes, that's fine. Two. Now, I'd like you to write something, please. All right. What shall I write? Well, the father is feeling very excited about all the fun they're going to have on holiday. So write happy on the front of his shirt. OK. I'm doing that now. Thank you. Three. Right. Color the water next. Do you mean the girl's drink? She's got a bottle in her hand. Not that. I mean the pool that the woman's thinking about. Oh, OK. Shall I make it blue? Yes, please. That's a good idea. Four. Can I write something else in this picture, too? Sure. Above the boy's head, the child with the baseball cap, you can see a board. Yes, I can see that. Good. Let's add the name of the road there. This road is called Cousin Road. Like the family word, you mean? Yes, it's the same spelling. Five. Now, the last thing to color. You decide. By myself? Oh, OK. Can I color the flashlight in the back of the car? Of course. Do you want to color it purple? No, I prefer yellow. Is that all right? That's fine. Well done. This picture looks a lot better now. Thanks. Twenty seven C. It's the holidays. Bye. Listen. What's Lily going to do today? Tick the boxes. 
Hi, it's Lily. Thanks for your message. I'm going to text all our friends. It's great to be on holiday, isn't it? After breakfast, I'm going to watch cartoons on Channel 5 and finish all the chocolate biscuits that Mom bought yesterday. After lunch, I'm going to take the front wheel off my bike and try to repair it. It won't be easy. I'd like to play chess, too, but there's no one here to play with. After dinner, I'm going to finish that adventure story I'm reading. You know, I told you about it. The one about the journey into another world. What about you? Are you going to play video games or join the sports club? Hello? Can you hear me? Oh, perhaps your phone isn't working. I'll call you again in ten minutes. Bye for now. Twenty eight D. I want to win. Listen and look. There is one example. What kind of competition is Anna getting ready for? Hello, Jack. Hey, I didn't like standing on the stage, but I won the music competition last week. Excellent, Anna. You're always entering competitions, aren't you? You're so good at art. Did you win that cartoon drawing competition? No, I didn't. Well, perhaps you'll win next time. Thanks. Actually, I'm trying to win another competition now. It's for growing the biggest fruit or vegetable. I planted some watermelon plants. They're getting really big. Wow! Can you see the tick? Now you listen and tick the box. 1. Who is helping Anna? Your dad knows a lot about growing plants. Is he helping you? He's too busy on the farm, but Grandpa's giving me lots of advice. That's lucky. Yes, he often helps Mum with her vegetable garden too. 2. What is the date of the competition? How much longer have you got before the competition date? It ends on the 29th, so I have to be ready by then. The 29th of June? That's in three weeks. No, I meant July, just before our August holiday from school. Oh, OK. You've got lots of time then. 3. How did Anna find out about the competition? Who told you about the competition? Nobody. I read about it in our village magazine. Is there any information about it on the village website? There might be. I don't know. It won't be easy to win because lots of people know about it now. 4. What is the first prize? The winner gets a great prize. Let me guess. A meal for all the family in the new village restaurant. <laughs> That's right. It's more fun than money. And better than one of those little silver cups. 5. Where is Anna going to go now? But I've got to hurry now. Why? Where are you going? To see if your plants are OK? I'll do that later. I've got a guitar lesson before I do that. Oh, OK. Well, I'm going to go and watch some cartoons. See you tomorrow and good luck. Thanks. Bye. Twenty nine A.
Doing sport. Having fun. Write twelve things you can see in the picture. One. You can see three of these, and someone is sitting and going down the hill on one of them. Two. One boy is carrying these over his shoulder. Another boy is coming down the hill on his. Three. Two people are holding these in their hands. They're cold, round, and white. Four. Two of the boys are trying to skate on this. Five. Most of the people are wearing these on their hands so they don't get cold. Six. Three people are wearing these round their necks. Seven. When you ski, you put one foot on each ski. When you go snowboarding, you put both feet on one. Twenty nine B. Doing sport, having fun. Listen and look. There is one example. It was such a cold day today. Can you see the ice on the balcony in this picture? Yes, Dad. Are all those children in your class? Yes, I took them up the mountain for a sports lesson this afternoon. There's Frank. The boy with the ice skates. That's right. He was a bit sore after he fell over, but he was okay. Can you see the line? Now you listen, and draw lines. Who's that girl? The one with the sledge. That's Vicky. She's very good at most sports. But it must be hard work pulling it up that hill. Yes. But she had good boots on. That helped. Look at those two with the snowballs. Yes, one looks quite angry. What's that kid's name? The girl. I meant the boy, actually. Oh, that's Hugo. He was all right. He just didn't like getting cold. And Eva's here somewhere as well. Is that her? The girl with the snowman's hat. Oh yes, there she is. Did she forget to bring her gloves? Yes, she did. Silly girl. Is that boy good at skiing? The one who's coming down really fast. I meant the one in the green jacket. What's his name, Dad? That's Tom. He's having some lessons, so yes, he's really improving. What about that girl? She looks really cool. Oh, that's Alex. Is her snowboard new? It looks new. I don't know, but her helmet is. So you had a fun day, Dad. Yes, I was a bit worried about this lesson, but no one needed bandages or X-rays, so that was good. <laughs> Twenty-nine F. Doing sport, having fun. Listen and write your answers. One. Which sports do you do at school? Two. Is there a sports center near your home? Three. Which sports do people in your family watch on TV? Four. Tell me about your favorite sport. Thirty-two B. Where? Jack is a postman. 
He takes things to different places in the town. Where did Jack take each thing? Hi, Jack. You look tired. Are you OK? Oh, hello, Julia. Yes, but I've been up and down so many steps today. I had hundreds of letters and some other quite interesting things to take to different places today. There were some special stamps. I needed to be very careful with those. Where did you take them? To the museum. They're really old. Wow! What did they look like? It's difficult to explain. Can you see the letter B? Now you listen and write a letter in each box. One of the largest things in my bag at the end of the day was a box. It was a funny shape and full of candy. <laughs> Where did you have to take that? To the university. Oh, who was it for? It was for someone important who teaches there. I like going there. It's full of such interesting people. But it's always difficult to find the right person to give things to. I had to take a board game that someone invented to an address that was quite difficult to find as well. Really? Yes. Someone told me it was a prize. Wow! For winning a competition? That's right. The people who entered had to design a poster for the new railway station. The winner was the manager of the new shoe factory. I found him in his office. He was really pleased. After that, I had to take lots of birthday cards to Miss Pond at the place where she works. She's very popular. I know her. She works at the library, doesn't she? She did, but she left about a month ago, so I took it to the bank instead. She's got a really good job there now. I think she's going to have a party this evening. Exciting! I had a lovely surprise for another person too. Really? What? A blue envelope which had an invitation inside. The address on the front was City Station, so that's where I took it. What was the invitation for? Dinner at that expensive hotel in Bridge Street. Fantastic! And then I just had a book of cartoons in my bag. I'd like one of those. It sounds fun. Yes, it looked great. Someone at the stadium bought it online. They were very pleased it arrived. It was a present for their daughter. Oh, that's nice. I hope she likes it. Thirty three B at the hospital. Listen and look. There is one example. The hospital is full of people today. I know lots of their names. Do you? Yes. Can you see that boy with the stomach ache? The boy with his mother? Yes. That's William. I give him piano lessons. Poor boy. Look at his green face. Can you see the line? This is an example. Now you listen and draw lines. Look at that woman. Which one? Over there. She's working on the computer. Oh, you mean the nurse with the blonde hair? 
That's Sarah. She looks busy. What's happened to Mark? I don't know. Which person is he? The boy who's hurt his arm. Look, he's just had an x-ray, I think. Oh, yes. Where's his tennis racket? I'm not sure. But he can't play tennis today. And there's poor Katie. She broke her leg when she fell off her bicycle yesterday. Where was she cycling? Down a hill. It's difficult for her to go up and down steps now, and it's very sore. Well, she can sit and read. I prefer e-books. Do you? Not always. What's the matter with that girl over there? Do you mean the girl with the nurse? No, the girl who's crying. The one in a skirt, not trousers. Oh, that's Betty. I don't know. But you're right. She doesn't look very pleased. And another nurse is taking Mary's temperature. The girl by the door? Yes. She had a really sore ear. She's touching it with her hand. Look. Oh, I get that sometimes. But it always gets better again quickly. Oh, that's good. Thirty four B. Oliver goes to hospital. Listen to the story. Draw lines under the differences. Last February, it didn't stop snowing, and Oliver and his group of friends had lots of fun playing with sledges on a high hill near their homes. But one afternoon, when Oliver's sledge hit some rocks, he fell and hurt his right elbow, but also broke his leg in two places. His friends were really worried, and one of them quickly rang John's parents. His mother came to help, and an ambulance soon arrived to take Oliver to hospital. Poor Oliver had to stay in hospital for a few days. The doctors were friendly and kind, and the food was great. So, at first, Oliver didn't mind. He didn't have to go to school or spend time doing lots of homework like his friends. He just lay in bed in his pyjamas and listened to rock music played chess and other games on his phone, and watched his favourite football team scoring lots of goals on TV. But after three days, Oliver began to feel quite bored and a little unhappy. But then, Peter Windows, one of the players in the football team, came into his hospital room. He was carrying a present, a pair of really cool football shorts. To wear during football practice when your leg is better, he said. Peter Windows wasn't alone. Oliver's cousin followed him into the room. And you can borrow my tablet while you're here, he said. Oliver began to feel much happier and very lucky. Then he had another surprise. One of his teachers appeared at the door. He brought something for Oliver as well, but it was some maths and history homework. I'm sorry about your poor leg, Oliver, he said, but make sure you do all this work before coming back to school in March.
34D. Oliver goes to hospital. Listen and look. There is one example. Hi, Frank. You're going to visit Oliver in hospital this afternoon, aren't you? Yes, Mr. Kind. Good. I hope he's getting better. Can you take him a book? He'll need it for his homework. Of course. Which book? His art book. Can you see the answer? Now you listen and write. We're studying 20th century paintings in Oliver's class now. Can you tell him that? Yes. Our class studied that last year. Which was your favourite painting? Um, I can't remember. Oh. Well, I'd like Oliver to read some texts. What page are they on? Page 110. They're not very long, and there are only five of them. OK, I'll tell him. What are they about? They're about one of my favourite artists. His name's Paul Clay. Sorry? How do you spell his last name? K L E E. Oh, yes! I remember him now. And Oliver must answer some questions, too. He can do that in his blue book, not the red one. Then perhaps his mum could bring it to school. All right. And there's another important thing. We're going to go on a trip to the sports stadium next week, so it's important that Oliver does this work as soon as he can. Is the trip next Monday? Yes, in the morning. OK. And all the teachers are very sorry about his leg. Please tell him that. Sure, but Oliver's OK. He's got lots of computer games with him. Good. Thirty-five E. What's it made of? Listen and look at the picture. There is one example. This room is untidy. Yes, but Emma and her father are going to tidy it. No one usually goes there. Oh, can I colour the umbrella? The open one. That's a good idea. Make it. Green, please. Can you see the green umbrella? This is an example. Now you listen and colour and write. One. Shall I colour that piece of paper next? The one with music on it, yes. Can I use purple for that? Yes, you can. Great! Thanks. That's my favourite colour. Two. Would you like to colour the suitcase, too? The round one. No, they never use that. Colour the square one. Colour it red. All right. What's inside it? I don't know. Three. What's that octopus made of? That old toy that Emma's dad is holding. Oh, plastic, I think. But can you see the metal box behind him? The tall one? Yes. Write the word books on it, please. All right. But it looks empty. Well, perhaps Emma's going to put some old toys in it soon. Four. Can I write something else here, too? On the TV screen? Well, no one has turned it on, but OK. How about movies? I love watching films. So do I. OK, you can write that word. Thank you. Five. 
Now, color the ball of wool for me, the one next to the castle. All right. Can I make that green? You've already used that color. No, make it brown instead. All right. I'm doing that now. There. Excellent. Thank you. Thirty seven D. Exciting days. Listen and look. Write numbers. What did you do at school today, Jim? Today was a great day, Grandma. I went to the fire station with my class. Oh, did you walk there? No, we got a lift on the school bus. What did you do there? First, a firefighter talked to us about the fire station. We were all outside, but it was a very hot day, so we went inside the fire station after that. Good idea. Today was very sunny. And the firefighters gave us their yellow helmets. They're very heavy. We put them on. I also put a firefighter's jacket on, but it was too big. Did you wear the hat and jacket all afternoon? No, we had to take them off. The firefighters needed to put them back in the fire engine. Next, we went up to the second floor of the fire station. This part was really exciting. Why? There was a kind of slide, like you sometimes see in swimming pools. It was made of plastic. We sat down and went all the way down to the ground inside it. We had such a lot of fun. <laughs> yes, it sounds good. And after that, it got even better. Why? What happened next? Because the firefighters used the water in the fire engine to make a shower for us. <laughs> wow. And have you got any photos to show me? Yes. I'll send you them by email. Okay, great. Thanks. Thirty eight E. Famous people. Look at the pictures and listen. Tell the story. Part one. These pictures tell a story. It's called Sue and Alex Go to the Match. Just look at the pictures first. Sue and her brother Alex love football. They're watching Oliver Quick on TV. Oliver is their favourite football player. Sue and Alex want to go and watch Oliver Quick when he plays in his next match. But they haven't got enough money to buy any tickets. Now you tell the story. Part 2 Sue's walking in the street now. Oliver Quick is running past Sue. Oliver's dropping some money. And Sue's picking it up. Sue's at home now. She's showing Oliver's money to Alex. Alex has got a good idea. Sue and Alex are at the football stadium now. They're giving Oliver his money. Oliver is very happy. He's giving Sue and Alex two football tickets. Sue and Alex are sitting and watching Oliver's match now. They're shouting and waving to Oliver. They're having a great time. Thirty-three. 
39C. In villages and towns. What did Lucy's mum buy in each place? Hello, mum. You've got a lot of bags. Yes, I've had such a busy day. I was shopping all afternoon. What did you get? Well, I went to the hospital to visit my friend Sophia, and I saw these scissors in the shop there, so I bought them. Can you see the letter E? Now you listen and write a letter in each box. Do you like my new pair of sunglasses? Yes, they're so cool. Well, I saw them while I was waiting for something in the chemist's. They weren't expensive, so I bought those too. Will you wear them tomorrow? Yes. And I remembered something I needed from the sports shop. A new tyre for your bike? No. You lost the blanket that you used in your tent on your school camping trip. Remember? Oh, yes. Did you get another one for me? Yes. It's lovely and soft. Look. Brilliant. I saw this in the window of that clothes shop. A handbag. It's really nice. It is, isn't it? There are lots of little pockets inside. I was lucky to find that. We needed some toothpaste too, didn't we? Did you get that? Yes, but not in this shop. I looked in that shopping centre in the town centre as well. What for? A new cooker. But I couldn't find one as nice as Grandma's, so I didn't get one. But I did get some tennis balls. Yellow is easier to see on cloudy days. Yes, they're better than white ones. Then I went to the bus station. I had to wait 15 minutes for the next number 20. Oh, I hate waiting there. Me too. But not today. I looked in the little shop there and found the toothpaste we needed. Great. Where is it then? Oh, no. Perhaps I dropped it somewhere. Oh, Mum! Forty C. What a strange planet. Listen and answer the questions about the competition. We have three questions for you. Choose one of the questions and write your answer. We will invite the winner of this writing competition to come and help us film our new TV programme. The TV programme is all about strange places on our planet and the strangest animals that live there. Forty one B. Meet the pirate actors. Listen and look at the picture. There is one example. Can you colour some of the things in this picture now? Yes. Can I colour the butterfly? I'd like to colour the one that's flying. That's a really good idea. Colour it blue, please. OK. Can you see the blue butterfly? This is an example. Now you listen and colour and write. One. What can I colour next? How about the stripe? You could colour that. Do you mean the one that I can see on William's shorts? Yes. I think... Red's a good colour for that. What about you? Great! No problem! There! Two. Now, can you see the shell? 
The one that's between the two big rocks on the right? No, the larger one that you can see on the sand under William. Oh, OK. Yes, I can see that one. Shall I colour it? Yes, please. You choose the colour this time. Brilliant. I'd like to use green for that. Can I do that? If you want, sure. Three. I'd like you to write something next. Can you do that? I can try. What must I write? Write gold on the box that William's looking at. Oh, because it's full of treasure. All right. Four. Can I write another word here? That's a good idea. Can you see the old boat, the one under the water? Yes. Can I write its name on it? I was thinking the same. Write Daisy on it. Like the girl's name? OK. Thank you. Five. Now, colour the fish. OK. Do you mean the one with the stripes and the big tail? The other one, actually. It's smaller. Fine. Can I colour it purple? I haven't used that colour yet. Yes. Thanks. It looks good now. I'd like to learn to swim under the water like that. Forty two A Holiday News Listen and tick the boxes. Hello, Dad. Oh, hello, Mary. Are you enjoying your school holiday? Yes, it's great. We're very busy. What have you done then? Well, you won't believe this, but I've ridden a camel. You're very brave. That sounds dangerous. No, it was fine. How's the food? Is it good? It's okay, but I haven't drunk any tea. Why not? I don't like it, but the ice creams are excellent. Have you sent Mom and me a postcard? Sorry, I haven't written any yet. And what about photos? Have you taken any? Oh, yes. I've taken hundreds. Oh, it's so exciting here. And have you seen lots of interesting things? Yes. We visited three museums. Wow. And have you spent all your money? No. We haven't been to the shops yet. We're going to go shopping tomorrow. Oh, right. Dad, I have to go now. See you at the airport on Saturday. OK. Bye. Forty two C. Holiday news. Listen and look. There is one example. Look. Your sister has sent us some photos of her holiday. Oh, yes. Some of the other students from her class are in this one. Look. Hmm. Do you know any of their names? Yes. The girl who's inside the tent is Betty. The one that's writing some postcards? Yes. Can you see the line? This is an example. Now you listen and draw lines.
Who's the boy that's sitting on the blanket? Do you know? That's Alex. His backpack is very full. It is, isn't it? Is he another one of your sister's friends? Yes. He's only just started at our school. You can see Katie here as well. She stayed in the sun too long. Look at her pink face. Oh, dear. She needs a bigger sun hat. <laughs> What's in that cup? Let's try to guess. Well, people drink lots of hot tea in the desert. It might be that. I know that boy. He's a really good basketball player. The boy with the flashlight? No, the one on the striped chair. He's called Harry. Look, he's reading something. Perhaps it's his diary. And who's that? Is it Matt? I think I know him. If you mean the boy who's put the blanket on the camel's back, no, that's Hugo. Oh, he's got lots of pockets in his shorts, hasn't he? Yes, he keeps his money and phone in those. That girl has traveled to lots of different countries because her dad is a pilot. Wow, that's exciting. Uh, sorry, which girl are you talking about? The one who's looking at that map. Oh, with the scarf round her head? Yes, her name's Sarah. Perhaps she doesn't want the sand to go in her ears. <laughs> <laughs>
talking about the time. Listen and look. There is one example. Which place did Richard and his class visit this year? Hello, Richard. Did you have a good holiday with the school? Yes, thanks, Aunt Helen. But we didn't go to the mountains this year. Oh, did you go to the beach then? No, we stayed on an island this year. It was excellent. Can you see the tick? Now you listen and tick the box. One. When did Richard's school holiday begin? When did your holiday start, Richard? In the first week of June. Our teacher wanted to go at the end of April, but we couldn't because she was ill. Oh dear! Your uncle and I always go on holiday in September. Do you? Yes. Two. What did Richard do on holiday? We spent one day in a village where people always live in tents. Wow! Did they cook on fires there? Yes, we did that too that day. It was fun. And was the water warm enough to swim in? No, and I wanted to climb the trees and get a coconut, but our teacher said. It's too dangerous. Three. What did Richard bring home? I brought a present home for you. That's kind of you. Let me guess. Is it some sweets? <laughs> I know you like those, but no, it's some soap. They make it from one of the plants on the island. I got some for Mum too. Great. Four. When can Richard's aunt watch the holiday film? Our teacher made a film of the holiday. What a good idea! We're going to watch it at ten o'clock tomorrow, and other people in the family can watch it after school at a quarter past four. I think. It's about thirty minutes long. Will you come, Aunt Helen? Yes, I'll come on my bike. Five. What will Richard wear? We aren't going to wear school uniforms when our teacher shows the film. Why not? Because it was too hot to wear jeans on the island, so we all bought some funny shorts. We're going to wear those. Will your teacher let you do that? Oh yes, she's going to wear some too. Forty-six A. We're all at home today. Listen and check your answers. Have you seen my pet tortoise yet? Yes, I have. It's really cool. Can your mum give me a lift into town later? She can't today. Sorry. Were there lots of people at the match? Yes, there were thousands. Did you repair your bicycle? No, I didn't have time. Is Oliver at home? He isn't now, but he will be later. Are you going snowboarding today? We are, but not until this afternoon. Forty six B. We're all at home today. Listen and look. There is one example. Where has Sophia's mum put Sophia's things? Mum, 
I've written the things I will need for school tomorrow on a piece of paper. Let me see, Sophia. The first thing I need is my umbrella. No problem. I brought that in with me from the car and put it in the hall. It's next to Dad's coat. Thanks, Mum. Can you see the letter G? Now you listen and write a letter in each box. Uh, what's the word that you've written here? Is it scissors? Yes, that's right. Well, they were in the desk in our old flat, so I put them with some other things in your rucksack, Sophia. All right. I'll go and look in the pockets. In a minute, not now. OK. And why do you need glue tomorrow? Have you broken something? No, Mum. It's for my art class. We're making models. Oh, that sounds interesting. Now, where have I put that? Oh, I remember. You didn't throw it in the bin, did you? It wasn't empty. No, I didn't. I put it in the bag that you take to the sports centre. Great, thanks. And you've written brush here too. Have you looked for that in the bathroom? Yes, but I couldn't see it anywhere. That's because it's in the cupboard, the one on the wall. So it's inside that, not on the shelf? No, you'll have to open the doors. Which dictionary do you need for school tomorrow? My English one. Ah, I put it in a big square box. You'll find it under the stairs. It's full of books. Please... Don't worry, Mum. I'll open it carefully. OK. But you won't find your gloves, Sophia. Why not? Because Billy the kitten found them and started playing with them. I had to put them in the bin. But we can go and buy some new ones on Saturday. That's OK. Where is silly Billy? Asleep. On your favourite cushion. Forty seven A. I will, or perhaps I won't. What might Sam be one day? What do you want to be, Sam? A dentist? No, I don't want to be a dentist. I'm sure about that. I won't be a dentist. I think that's a boring job. An engineer? Mm, no. I might be an ambulance driver, but that's a difficult job. A journalist? I may be a journalist because that's an interesting job. Or a teacher? Wow, yes. That's a great job. 47D. I will, or perhaps I won't. Listen and look. There is one example. Helen's mum, Mrs. Kind, wants to give each of her friends a present. Which present is for each friend? I like giving presents, Helen. It's such a nice thing to do. But I have to decide which present to give each of my friends. But it isn't their birthdays. I know it isn't, but I still like giving presents. Well, what are you going to give Grace? Let me think. She loves travelling, so this new backpack, I think. She can carry all her things in it on long journeys. Can you see the letter B? 
Now you listen and write a letter in each box. Who else are you giving a present to? Do you remember Robert, the mechanic? He gave us lots of help last month when we were worried about our car. Yes, I remember. Well, he'll like these gloves. Yes, I'll give him these. They'll be good for carrying all those heavy engine parts. And this is for Alex. She'll like this a lot. What is it? I can't see. It's a box of very expensive tea. She likes having things that you can't buy in this country. I bought this online. I got these spoons at the same time, but I'll give those to someone else. They came from China. Amazing! And now a present for George. Actually, he might like these golf balls. Or shall I give him this computer mouse? He won't want that, Mum. Your first idea is better. Give him those instead. You're right. He's improving a lot because he plays every weekend now. And this is for Michael. Who's he? Oh, he's an old friend. I want to give him this wonderful honey because he's such a busy man. He's always working on his computer. And it'll be really good for him. He'll like the taste of it too. So he'll like that more than a new watch, Mum? Yes, I'm sure he will. And last of all, here's something for Sarah. Oh, the silver spoons. Yes, she's buying things to put in her new kitchen, and I'm sure she'll really love these. Can't I have them? No, you won't ever use them. Oh, OK. Forty eight D. Doing different things. Listen and look. There is one example. Excuse me, aren't you Nick Silkwood, the singer? Yes, that's right. I'm surprised. I didn't know you were here in our town. My son lives here. I've come to visit him. That's nice. What's his name? It's Michael. He works at the concert hall. Oh, can I ask you some questions about your family and your job for our school magazine? Yes, of course. Can you see the answer? Now you listen and write. Where does your son live? At number twenty-three, Kingley Street. Do you spell that K I N G? L double E. No, K I N G L Y. Oh, okay. I don't know it. Sorry. Have you got any other children, Nick? Yes, I've got a daughter. She's married. I've got five grandsons too. Wow. And when did you start singing? When I was quite young, I was eleven actually. I had a really great music teacher at school. That's lucky. I've seen you on television. You play the guitar very well. Thanks, but I play the drums best. I enjoy them the most too. I didn't know that. One last question. If you don't mind, that's fine. What's your favourite song? Let's think. I know. It's called My Winter. 
I don't know that one. But is that your favourite time of year too? Yes, I love skiing. Me too. Thank you very much for answering my questions. That's okay. Forty nine A. Busy families. Listen and look. There is one example. Who are all these people in your picture? Hi, Mr. Boots. It's my mum, my brothers and sisters, and my cousins. We were all really busy that day. I can see that. Is that one of your sisters, the girl on the floor? Yes, that's Jane. She's playing with her dolls. They're wearing pretty dresses. Hmm. She likes dressing them up in funny costumes too. Sometimes. Can you see the line? This is an example. Now you listen and draw lines. My brother David is always hungry. Which boy is he? The one with curly black hair? That's right, and the sandwiches. Did he make those? He likes cooking, but no, Mum made them for him. Do you know my cousin Sally? No. Which one's she in your picture? She's the girl who's outside. She's making a snowman. The one with long blonde hair? No, the other one. She's got a purple scarf round her neck. Poor Lucy had quite a lot of homework that afternoon. Doesn't she enjoy writing? She prefers reading, playing chess, or making things. <laughs> Look, she's wearing her favourite hat. Why? She says it's her lucky hat. I don't know how she can study in our kitchen. It's always so noisy there. Why is that boy cutting up that newspaper? Was he doing some English homework? Art, actually. That's Jack. He was helping my other sister to make her model of a spaceship. He's really good at that. He wants to be a designer or engineer one day. Well, it looks quite difficult. It was. They couldn't make the rocket tall enough. Our house is usually quite untidy. But my oldest sister doesn't mind that. Doesn't she? Which girl is she? The one who's cleaning the floor. She's really nice. She's never unkind to anyone. That's good. I see she's got a brush in her hand. Yes, that's right. Her name's Vicky. I think I'll go and tidy my room up now. See you later, Mr. Boots. Okay. Forty nine E. Busy families. Listen, then write the missing words. Wake up! Wake up! It's time to go to school. Oh, but I'm too tired. My back hurts. I want to stay in bed. No, Fred. No, you must get up now. It's late. It's not. It's too early. I'm not going out. I'm not going anywhere. There's a storm outside. Listen, it's raining too hard, and it's too cold. No, Fred. No, it's sunny and warm. It's a lovely day, and you're on holiday. You are having a bad dream. Fifty A. On TV. Listen and look. There is one example. Good morning. 
I'm a journalist and I'm making a programme for television. Can I ask you some questions, please? Yes, of course. Thank you. First, what's your name? Richard Hudson. Is that H U D S O N? That's correct. Can you see the answer? Now you listen and write. What do you do, Mr. Hudson? What's your job? I'm an artist. Oh, I see. You paint pictures. No, I don't paint. I make things. Do you? What kind of things do you make? Lots of different kinds of things. I work with wood and also with metal. That sounds interesting, and difficult too. And do you start work early? Not very early. I go for a run at eight o'clock. Then I have a shower, and start working after breakfast at about half past nine. Oh, and where do you work? In a factory? No, I do all my work in my basement. I like working there because it's nice and quiet. I understand. And what are you making now? I've just started making a lamp. It's going to be one of the most beautiful things that I've ever made. I think. How clever! Well, I'd like to thank you for answering my questions, Mr. Hudson. That's okay. Fifty one B. Here's my news. Listen and look. There is one example. Shh. Be quiet, Nick. You mustn't talk in here. Sorry, Miss Key. Can I take this book home with me? Here's my card. When do I have to bring it back? Next Thursday. Can you see the letter D? This is an example. Now you listen and write letters. One. Good morning, Mrs. Day. Can I phone home? I forgot to tell my parents something. I want to have lunch at school today, so I'm not going home in the break at midday. Okay, Nick. I'll tell the kitchen manager. Here's the phone. Two. What can I give you for lunch today, Nick? I'll have chicken and fries with a green salad, and I might have some fruit. Can I take a pear from this bowl? Of course you can. Three. Now listen, everyone. Nick's going to tell us about the website he's just looked at. The North Museum's homepage has lots of paintings on it. It's very quick and easy to use, and looks great on screen. And you can also play games. The address is www.northmuseum.org. Four. What are we going to do today, Mr. Park? Basketball? No, badminton. I've never played that before. Where are we going to play? Outside? No, inside. Over there. Oh, those white lines on the floor are for badminton. Of course. Fifty one E. Here's my news. Listen to Paul talking about his day. Hello, my name's Paul. I'm going to tell you about my school day. 
Well, my house is about two kilometers away from my school, but I live at the top of a mountain. I wake up at seven o'clock, and I always have to put on warm clothes because it's cold up here. In winter, I always have a hot breakfast because it can be very, very cold outside. There are no bus stops near my house, so I use the ski lift to go down the mountain to my school in the village. But when there's snow, I put on my skis and ski down the mountain to school. I love going to school that way. There are fifteen students in my class, and I'm not the only person who comes down the mountain to school. Jane, the girl who sits next to me in class, comes on a dog sledge with her brother and sister. My favorite lesson is geography, and I also like maths. I'm good at sport too. I'd like to be a ski teacher or to be part of my country's ski team one day. School finishes at quarter past four. Sometimes after school, I go to a friend's house in the village. In winter, I have to carry my skis over my shoulder. Then I take the ski lift up the mountain to go back to my house. Fifty-two B. What a lot of questions! Listen. Which questions from A does Holly's mum answer? Mum, have you read the questions in this magazine? Can I ask you them? Okay, Holly. Right. How many times have you been on a theatre stage? Wow. <laughs> I don't know.、Um, I was in the school theatre group for five years. We did lots of acting, so I've been on stage hundreds of times, I guess. Really? You never told me that. Next, how often do you go online? Every day, but I only use the internet when you or your brother aren't on my computer. I try to answer my emails in the afternoon, before we get home from school. That's right. Fifty-two E. What a lot of questions! Listen and colour. Did you see that competition on the television last night? Harry Doors was in it. Harry Doors, the boy at our school, was he? Yes, he looked great. He had a red sweater on, and he answered lots of questions. He's so clever. He knows how far it is to the moon. Well, I don't. Who asked all the questions? An old man with a funny yellow scarf on. I remember another question. It was, how many letters are there in each of the words alphabet and mustache? Harry put his hand up so quickly, but a girl got the next question right. She had long brown hair. What was the question? What's thirty times fifteen? Hmm, four hundred and fifty. Yes, I want to find Harry and ask him about the competition. Did he win it? Yes. What did he win? A computer that he can use at home. It was green. Harry wants to be an astronaut one day. He told the man on the program. Wow. Fifty-three B. Finding your way. 
Listen and look. There is one example. What does Harry need? So, Harry, I like walking round Castle Town, don't you? What do we need to get for you here today? I've forgotten. Only a Castle Town football shirt, Mum. Nothing else. Oh, yes. What about some new shorts, too? My old ones are still fine. And you don't need any new sports shoes yet, so that's good. Can you see the tick? Now you listen and tick the box. 1. What is opposite the library now? How far is the library from here? I'd like to go there too. Not far. It was opposite this railway station, wasn't it? But it isn't here now. Where is it then? It's in a new building opposite the chemist's. The one I like. So it'll only take us another five minutes to get there. Oh, OK. So we just have to go past the post office and then turn left. That's right. Well done. 2. Which way will Harry and his mother go to the castle? And after lunch, we can walk round the castle again. We can go down that road where all those nice houses are. Last time, we went through the park and saw a volleyball competition. I remember. But that other road to the castle is always so busy. All the town traffic uses that. Yes, that's no fun. I don't want to go that way. 3. Which train will Harry and his mother take home? Which train will we go home on today? Not the one that leaves at 5.30. It's so slow. No, that one's too early. Well, the next one's at 10 to 6. I know the timetable for all our trains now. Yes, we'll catch that one. It arrives home at 8 o'clock. 4. What will Harry have to eat? I'm getting hungry. I might have chicken with a salad for my lunch. Why don't you have something different this time? I'm going to have some of the wonderful fish soup that they make in the restaurant by the river. I don't want a salad if we go there. Can I have some pasta? You get lots and lots on a really big plate in that place. <laughs> Good idea. Of course you can. 5. What has Harry lost? What's the matter, Harry? You look worried. Have you lost your money? No, I haven't lost that. But my train ticket isn't in my pocket. Did I drop it? You gave it back to me, remember? But what about your camera? You were holding that too, weren't you? Oh, no. I think I left it at the station. Fifty four C. Let's have some fun. Listen and look at the picture. There is one example. Are all these people actors? No, some of them are, but these people all work at the theatre. Well, it's a funny picture. Shall I colour a few things here? Can I colour the girl's spotted wings? Yes, please. Make them green. OK. I think she's a butterfly. Can you see the girl's green wings? This is an example. Now you listen and colour and write. 1. How about colouring one of the whales? Um, all right. Colour the one with the smaller tail. OK. 
Why don't I use blue for that? Yes, good idea. Great, I'll do that now. Two. There's a girl by the flag. What about colouring her striped T-shirt next? Sorry, we don't need to colour that. But you can colour her boot. You can only see one of her feet. Oh, yes. Shall I use red for that? Yes, please. She's brilliant at acting, that woman. Oh. Three. Let's write something on the ship next. Write its name. What should we call it? Let's call it Julia. That's my favourite girl's name. But it's a good name for a boat too, I think. Yes, it is. Great. Thank you. There. Four. And now some more colouring. Colour the light, please. Do you mean the one that the man's holding? No, I mean the one that's above the actors. Colour that one yellow. All right. It's not going to fall down, is it? No. Five. Shall I write something on that board next? There, under this afternoon. Yes. Write the word water before the word dance. Can you do that? Yes. Is that the missing word? Yes, it is. It's a kind of swimming dance. Oh, that sounds funny. Right, I finished now. Excellent. Thanks. Fifty five C. If I feel bored, listen and say which picture. One. The man's sitting under a blanket on a sofa. Two. The girl's skipping in a park. Three. The man looks ill. Four. The girl's happy because she's having fun. Five. The man's tired because he's run a long way. Six. The girl's unhappy because she can't go out. Fifty six A. Fun and games. Listen and look. There is one example. I went to a great party last Saturday. It was for the end of school. And the start of the holidays. Good idea. What did you do there? Did you play games? Yes. Look, here's a picture. Betty likes playing word games most of all. She's the girl who's giving everyone the pieces of paper. Do you mean the girl in the spotted dress? Yes. Can you see the line? This is an example. Now you listen and draw lines. Who's that boy? The one who's dancing? The boy who's holding all the CDs? Yes. His name's Michael. Does he enjoy playing word games? Yes, but he likes playing his guitar more. And there's Helen in the pink shorts. She helped with the cooking. She made that cake. Wow. 
What's inside it? Chocolate. It tasted great. I ate too much of it. I love eating cake too. And what about that boy? What's his name? Do you mean the boy on the sofa? No, the boy with the green sweater on. He's carrying a chair. Can you see? Oh, yes. That's William. He's always helping people.、Mm -hmm. He's very kind. Who's that? The person who's carrying that big plate of burgers. That's Robert. He won the word game later. He's very clever. Is he? Yes, but I think he had some help. Can you see that little red book in his pocket? Yes. I think it's a dictionary. My best friend is here, too. We never stop laughing. Is that Lucy? No, it's Katie. She's the one in the funny hat and shoes who's sitting on the floor. She likes wearing clothes that no one else wears. Why? Oh, I don't know. She just likes having fun. Fifty six D. Fun and games. Listen and play Betty's favorite word game. Hi, I'm Betty, and this is my favorite word game. I love it. Are you ready? Look at all the words on the page quickly. I'll give you half a minute to do this. Okay, right. Now listen to me carefully. First, cross out five colours. Now, find five animals and cross those out too. Great. Now cross out five things that people wear. Ready. Cross out five things that people drive next. Cross out five time words. Can you see them? Cross out five words that say how you feel. And cross out five jobs. Cross out five fun things that people do. Last of all, cross out five words that help say where something is. How many words are left? Have some fun with those, and with all the other words in this book too. Bye.